All right, folks, this is the interview that you guys have been waiting for. Uh, as promised, I did an interview with David Nino Rodriguez, and I have a quick question for you guys. Can someone that backs the blue actually support what we do? Can we find a way to uh, find some common ground and have discussions so that we can better this country from all angles? I believe so, and I gotta tell you guys, he starts off the interview with uh, I Back the Blue, and I was a little afraid of how the interview was going to go, but I got to tell you, he absolutely appreciates what I do, what we do as a community, and he agrees with the work. And I think you guys are really going to appreciate this video. Uh, he has it on his channel. I'm putting it on mine as well, so you guys can see the full interview here. And uh, stick around to the end because once he... Once we cut off the interview, we just talk and it's just kind of just two guys just talking, you know, and I think you guys are going to really appreciate the whole interview and the ending as well. Uh, quick shout out to Alki David who connected us and put us in touch with each other. Uh, thank you, Alki, for your tremendous work and uh, and just, just being a good dude. I do give some shout outs to a lot of veterans that do what we do and a lot of you channels out there that do what we do. If I missed you, I'm truly sorry, guys. This is kind of all off the top of my head, and I just had to think as much as possible and put you guys out there. So if I missed you, I know there's a lot of channels that I missed. Um, I apologize. And one more quick shout out before you watch the video. All my friends out in the UK uh, that do audits, uh, you guys in Canada, you guys in Australia, and other places around the world as well. Uh, I didn't give you guys a shout out in this video, but I was thinking about you. And just my mind was going 100 miles an hour, guys. You guys are going to see. But I do want to give you guys a shout out before we get into the video. So thank you all for supporting my channel. Thank you all for supporting my work throughout the years. And uh, I really do like David Nino Rodriguez's channel. So if you're not subscribed to David Nino Rodriguez... Subscribe to him. I think you guys are going to learn a lot from his channel. He has a bunch of guests on there. And he's just an amazing man. And uh, so without further ado, guys, here's your video. Are you ready? All right, folks. Welcome to Nino's Corner.TV. Actually, I'm going to try to put this up on YouTube, FluffTube. I think we can make this happen. I'm joined with David. <laughs> tocayo yeah my tocayo <laughs> yeah, my daughter, tocayo san joaquin valley transparency audit where he audits the police keeps them in check i'm a big fan of this i'm not about causing any disruptions or or doing anything like that but keeping them aware of your of our amendments of right. our constitutional rights and what you guys do i commend dave i'm glad yes, to have sir. you on man i've been That'd looking be forward it. to this interview um like I said, I back the blue. Okay, my family has been in. My family's in the FBI, the, uh, the you know the chief of police. But listen, I know a lot of these guys can be glorified bouncers with badges. Okay, that's how I see a lot of these guys. They don't know our rights. They don't know our constitutional rights. They don't know the amendments. You even quizzed one of the guys in public on camera. He had no idea what the First Amendment was. I right. mean, this is what we're dealing with. We got to make sure that these guys are held responsible to carry that badge. Right. Absolutely. So when I started my channel, there's a reason I put transparency in my channel name. And that's because I wanted to highlight the good and the bad. There's, you know, this thing about statism versus voluntarism. I guess if you believe that we should have government to regulate us and tell us what to do and where to go, then I guess you're a statist. If you live in a voluntarist type of state of mind, I guess you feel that, you know, there should be, <clears throat> unless you create a victim, there is no crime, you know, and I've tried to balance that within myself since I started my channel. And uh, I've come to learn a lot when, and I, and, and I guess that will lead me to answer the question. I know this is going to be asked. Um, what got me to start doing this and got me to start uh, recording police and start asking questions? I woke up one day and I seen the news and it said that Kern County was the deadliest county for police justified killings. So I was like, wow, man, my kids are growing up here. How is this a sustainable way to live? So I decided to go out and start recording. You know, I tried to stay anonymous as long as possible. 
And uh, I try to do my best to, you know, try to make it respectful and try not to come off as anti-police. And I got to tell you that some of the channels that came before me, they would call me like half a bootlick or whatnot, because I would try to like fist bump cops who wouldn't try to violate my rights, you know, yeah, shake you're hands. Just trying to be cool. You're trying to be cool. Yeah. You know, I try to shake hands with, with uh, cops who were very respectful of my rights and stuff like that. So I always try to come off as not being anti-police or even you know, pro police. I just wanted to put the truth out there and what I saw and what I what I was recording. And I wanted the cops here in Kern County and Bakersfield to think that someone was recording them at all times, even if I wasn't out there. You know, the way I see it, if we don't keep them on check, if we don't audit them, then it's a runaway train. Because if these guys can't even name the amend the uh constitution amendments they don't even know this, then this gives more justification for the new world order to do what they're going to do. Globalism. They're going to come in and who do they use? They, they use the police and they swear to the constitution to protect our rights. And if they don't even know those rights, we have a serious problem, a very serious problem. Absolutely. Uh, one of the things that I've discovered since I started this channel is uh, I started asking cops, you know, I didn't, I didn't, start walking up to cops and just swear at them. I started to ask questions. And one of the questions that I began asking cops, and this allowed me to uncover a pattern was, do you know the First Amendment of the Constitution? And there's five elements to it. And I, and I got to say, let, let me ask you really quick, Nino, and I, I hate to put you on the spot, but do you well, know the five elements of the First Amendment of the Constitution? Well, I know it's a freedom of press. I know it's a freedom of speech. Um, Outstanding. And I know that it's the right to assemble and that leads to the that leads to the second amendment which which people don't know this it's the the right to a well regulated militia okay not just the right to bear arms the right, right. the the to a re, re, well regulated militia so people really need that yes and i do know the amendments i know Out, outstanding bro i'm glad i'm glad that you you you're able to at least name three of them um there's religion as well and yeah. uh why well, I can't like verbatim like you know right right I can read them but you know what's funny is uh, as long as I've been doing this uh, I don't really know the whole like how to read it verbatim either um, or state it verbatim but I do know the five elements of it and this is one of the the patterns that I've uncovered with police is they don't really know it and what I find funny is the fact that they swore an oath to the Constitution when they get that job the badge and the gun and the uniform and they're being thrown out in the streets like this and I think. Not that not only makes it dangerous for the people, but also makes it dangerous for the cop. They can uh, put themselves in a dangerous position by trying to uh, get people to comply or give up ID when a person doesn't have to. There's a there's a thing called RAS, reasonable articulable suspicion that you've committed a crime. In fact, you don't have to identify unless a cop can articulate that they have RAS, a reasonable articulable suspicion that you committed a crime. And they're not supposed to take you into custody until they can articulate SAF, S-A-F, a single articulable fact that you committed a crime. And that's when you pretty much have to identify. They'll get your uh, fingerprints or whatnot. And uh, some of these things I've learned along the way, you know, while doing the work that I do. And uh, and it's just it, it 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 I have to question, you know, where exactly we're at. Um, I had a friend who, and, and I will say that I speak to the who is who of police accountability, uh, Jason Bassler from Police to Police, the original dude. Uh, he also has that website, the Free Thought Project. Amazing dude. Uh, very smart as well. I've learned a lot from him, just like uh, when he told me, you know, the First Amendment was written to mirror your natural rights, because I used to call him um uh, people's rights, you know, human rights. And he says, well, I don't really like to call them human rights because people tend to think like, where are these humans at? Where is this coalition of humans that think they have rights? When you speak of it in terms as natural rights, I, you know, I began to understand that we're actually born with these natural rights. And the First Amendment mirrors those natural rights, you know, freedom of religion, pray to God or no God, you know, freedom of speech, freedom of press you're able to go out and record and you don't need a press pass i just i want to clear that i want to clear the air on this i think a lot of folks have a misconception of you need a, a press pass to actually be press <laughs> no that's part of your first amendment right you're able to pick up a camera or your phone and go out and record and ask questions 
And I'm glad also- you're stating that, especially in the society we live in today. Just having a phone with a camera on it, you're now considered press. Absolutely. And uh, that leads another question is, do we know and understand the differences between private property and public property? Um, a lot of folks don't seem to know that, you know, and I, I want to give a shout out to Carlos Miller from Photography is Not a Crime. I don't think he actually goes out and records anymore, but he was the one who coined the term First Amendment audits. And uh, and there, I also want to give a shout out to Jeff Gray, Honor Your Oath, who a lot of folks consider the godfather of First Amendment auditing. Those two guys are some of the guys that I began watching, along with Joe Citizen Ho and a lot of other guys out there that came before me. And uh, when I came about, when I started my channel, there was only like a handful of First Amendment auditing channels, and there was probably a dozen cop watchers out there. And I started to see things as well. Maybe some things that I didn't like, some of the channels that were before me, some of the things I feel like uh, they were trying to corner the market. So one of the things that I decided to do as well is help the channels, smaller channels grow. My channel kind of started taking off really fast. And um, because I didn't want to approach this as being anti-police, you know, I wanted to right. try to. And that, that was be a question I was going to ask you right now, Dave, is that people will say like, oh, this guy's bullying police. He's instigating problems. How are you going about this? Like, how do you come into a situation? Like, do you egg the police on? Do you just show up to a stop, a traffic stop, and start recording? Like, what do you do? How do you get in these predicaments or these situations with police? Because I've been wondering that myself. Um, great question. Uh, and, you know, I maybe I have baited police a little bit, but do police use bait cars for the people? You know, you don't have to bite if you're being baited, right? And I try to not approach this in in that type of manner. Like, um, and I and I and I will say this, guys. You will find videos on my channel where I've made a tremendous amount of mistakes, especially when I first started out. Um, I didn't. I don't really think I knew exactly what I was doing. I just kind of felt like something needed to be done, and uh, I made a tremendous amount of mistakes along the way. I do take advice. Um, I don't want to scare your viewers away. I, I do want to say that I take constructive criticism. So if you're watching now on David Nino's channel, you know, don't don't be afraid. Don't don't turn this off yet. Keep watching because I do believe that that I will bring something to the table where a lot of folks will understand. Like I said, I've made a lot of mistakes along the way and I try to clear up my mistakes because I feel like we're allowed to make mistakes. But once we realize their mistakes, um, once you keep doing them, then you just become the asshole. You become the tyrant, right? <laughs> and yeah, I don't want to become inten- Your intention is pure. Your intention is good. Right. You're, you're, you're out for people's rights. And that's what I see. I mean, you can make many mistakes. Look, I make mistakes probably on every show. But the thing is this, is that I come out and clear the air and say, oops, I, I screwed up on that one, folks. I'll, I'm sorry. I'm, I went back and retract my statement, whatever. Um, and the same thing with you, your, your, your mission is growing organically. So obviously you're going to hit some hiccups. You're going to have some speed bumps. You're, you're going to mess up on some things you say, but your intention is good. And that's what I want to convey to the people is as long as your intention is good. Right. Um, definitely. I try to, you know, keep a good head on my shoulders. I try to stay positive. A lot of folks have said that, you know, I bring some kind of a uh, humor to my work as well. I try to make it funny and, I try to make it to where the cop, you know, gets comfortable with me when I'm out there speaking. I've been told as well, like, oh, you know, don't try to educate the cops while you're out there. Well, in in, in reality, I'm not necessarily just trying to educate the cop, I'm trying to educate the viewer. I do believe that we as parents shouldn't be sending our kids out in the streets to go to football games or Starbucks or without knowing their natural rights. I think this is important. And one thing I want to... Um, one thing I want to make clear as well is the fact that the Bill of Rights and the Constitution and these documents, they don't give us our rights. We are born with natural rights. These documents are written to limit the scope of authority that public officials have over us, the people. And, you know, like I was saying, I have a friend who uh, asked me one time, why don't you talk about politics? And I was like, well, you know, this is how I think of politics, man. And And I could be wrong, but... It seems like the left wants to create more government and the right wants to enforce it. So it's two wings of the same bird. I know a lot of us have heard that before. I agree with you on that completely. It's and all I part have, of the same swamp. Right. I've, I've leaned left before and I lean, I, I've i leaned right. But at the end of the day, I feel like I walked out of a boxing match with Nino Rodriguez. You know? <laughs> <laughs> Both of my chicks are red. <laughs> yeah, no, it is like that. How do you think I feel every day talking about this stuff? 
Um, I want to do a play a video. I have a one of your videos of a of a. Let me see if it's on here, right here. Is is it a, is there a sign on the front? A no trespassing sign. What makes you think? Yeah, uh, what would make you think that we were arguing? We we're just asking you a legitimate question, right? No, 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 no. <laughs> right. Let me ask you something. That memorial right there, that's not for the public to see? Huh? You have to be invited onto the property to see the memorial? Yeah. But the taxpayers pay for it. Oh, well, that's something for supervisors. Okay, actually. Bro, the sign is posted on the building. That means there's no trespassing in the building. That's how that works. If there's a tr no trespassing sign out there in the street, in the front of the street. Trespassing inside of the building. Inside the building, and that's considered... That's not true. Uh, hold on, man. Hold on, dude. You don't have to be rude. I'm copying this guy. I mean, I was trying to I was trying to talk to... Was it May? What's the badge number, if you don't mind? Because you're, you're accosting us. You're telling us we have to leave. I'm documenting this. And it's part of your policy. I'm not, I'm not standing on the fucking building, dude. I'm not standing on the building. I'm not. No, 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 no. That's not true. Where's the penal code that's stated out there? And you're telling me that that memorial. Li listen, listen to this. How important this is. You're telling the cam, me and the camera and the people of, of Los Angeles that that memorial is not open to the public. That's what you're saying? Williamson, you said your name is? That's what you're saying. That that's not open to the public. Can you guys get a supervisor out here? <laughs> this guy ready to beat somebody up. Jeez, bro. It looks like you're the only one out here ready to argue. The cop has a flashlight in his hand in broad daylight, just so you guys know. I mean, come on, bro. We got cameras. We don't have what yeah, we... this. <laughs> hey, but you gotta you gotta understand. Look at you know, if, if you guys are trying to enforce some kind of policy that's not law, it's not only our right to, hold on, it's not only our right to do it, it's our duty to come in here and make sure that your guys' policy is not trying to overstep the boundaries of our legitimate constitutional rights. Does that make sense, though? And if it's not, will you apologize? If, if, if you're wrong, will you apologize? Okay. Well, let's go look for some signs, man. Call supervisor. I mean, there's no reason to be. Wow, he is holding his flashlight. <laughs> Broad daylight. Wow, well, that's well, that's intimidation right there. The front. Yeah. And tell you what, either way, we're gonna look. Listen, we're either way we're gonna go to the front. If I go around and I see there's no signs, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna challenge that, bro. I'm gonna challenge that, okay? Because I don't like the lawful orders, man. All right. All right. Is that does that sound fair to you? And will you apologize if you're wrong, bro? I mean, man to man, right? All right. Are you are you calling a supervisor either way? Why not? Yeah, that's your policy as well, dude. First of all, I asked you for your badge number. You didn't want to give me your badge number. You didn't want to at first. And secondly, <laughs> you accosted us. Yes, you accosted us. You guys actually spoke out of your out of the thing on your on your car. Come on. Look, and I'm not trying to be rude, bro. Well, look, bro. If you're wrong, and that and that memorial is, a, if that shit's open to the public, and you guys are wrong, bro, I don't appreciate it. Does that make sense? And I'm gonna expect an apology, bro, man to man. All right, just just because you have the the badge on doesn't make you come and enforce feelings. And and this guy, this guy called and says he doesn't want us on the property. But what if he's wrong, bro? We didn't see. We looked around. We didn't see anything posted. I get it. I seen that, but that's for the building. We'll go look, like I said, bro. We're gonna go look for the signs outside, man. But, but if you're wrong, we're gonna come back. Do I hear a helicopter? Um, no, but you know what's funny is uh, this is the sheriff training facility. We go to the LAPD training facility afterwards, and we get a bunch of cops called on a helicopter. And uh, it, that one was a record breaking audit. <laughs> Most cops called on a person. Was that for us? <laughs> I was for training. 
Yeah, that's me asking if the helicopter's there for us. We talked to a, we spoke to a security guard out there in the front on the parking lot over there, and he was trying to tell us that um, that parking lot as well was close to the public, but it doesn't have any signs either, bro. And and I'll tell you something else. Nah, that's cool, man. But it's just training, bro. I say that all the time. The real action is testing, testing. Uh, the real action is testing. Uh, supposed uh Presumed policies authority. or supposed uh how do I say it? Um, you know, you guys have presumed authority. That's the real video. Testing presumed authority. You know what I'm saying? Like when you guys feel like you have authority to kick us off property, and really in reality, I do don't believe you guys do. And that's why I'm asking you for to call a supervisor so we can clarify this. And you're saying no. And that's part of your policy as well, bro. You were dispatched out here. Yeah, there is a reason to call because we have questions, man. And and when and huh? No. That's part of your policy to call your supervisor. We're the way we didn't call you, man. But who called you? They don't like the light shown on them, do they? You know, it doesn't make it doesn't ring uh, like it doesn't make sense what we're doing and why we're doing it. Because okay, let me let me ask you this: Is should freedom should not freedom be the the most important topic on every dinner table of every American? Save it. Save what? It. <laughs> I bet you guys don't even know the First Amendment. I bet you guys don't even know the First Amendment. Right? No. What time? It says law enforcement training in progress. Where's the penal code on that? Photography, but that's a policy. That's not that's exactly, a exactly. Supposed to hey man, don't. Hey bro, I know. I know you don't like to be educated, and I know the public. <laughs> it doesn't feel good for the public to come and tell you, bro. You ain't nobody's boss, bro. The, the public is your boss. Right or wrong? Exactly. Until we break the law. Yeah. We have authority over you guys, and that's the truth. You know, we're not trying to give you a hard time. You know, you're shaking your head, yeah, 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 but it's true. Hey, can you call a supervisor out here? Because uh, we don't believe that this is private property. As a matter of fact, let me ask you. Let me ask you. Are you telling me that the? But are, are you telling me that that memorial is not open to the public? But is that memorial open to the public? You said that you know where the security is at. Uh huh. Said that that's private behind it. All right. Well, let, let's put. Can you show me a, a no trespassing sign? Oh hell yeah! Thank you. I appreciate that. It is your policy, right? You know that, right? It's your policy when they ask for supervisor. This guy May doesn't know it, bro. Can you educate him in the locker room? <laughs> May's acting like a poo butt. <laughs> nah, but you understand what we're doing, right, man? We're not, we're not bad dudes, bro. Sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. You don't understand what we're doing. Well, well what's gonna, what's gonna make you understand, man? Is freedom not the most important? Shouldn't that be talked on every dinner table? Do you know the First Amendment? Yes, sir. Do you, do you know what the First Amendment is? But do you, do you know? Are, is that really your answer to what a first, Hold the on. first Amendment is? Come on, man. So, you don't need to figure out. He didn't know what the First exactly. Amendment was. No, he said, uh, uh, I know you're a First Amendment auditor. Remember, this is the land of that the was his answer to that. People to walk freely without nobody coming up to us, asking us for papers, asking us for anything. Unless it's private property. This isn't private property. Who paid, who's the owner of this property? The county, right? The taxpayers, right? Us, right? You, right? So you said that this is private. And I'm asking you serious. I'm not trying to make you guys understand. Who paid? All right. Now... The fact that an officer doesn't know the First Amendment, to me, is should raise a huge red flag. This... Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. Did you hear me before when I was talking over the video? Yes. All right. Probably sound the same. This mic probably doesn't even work. Um, you guys got 874,000 views on that video. Yeah. So it's it's making a huge dent. Right. And it's to be taken very serious. More people need to be to be like you and know their rights. Everybody needs to know their rights. At least know your amendments. And I'm not. A, I'm not. A, I'm not advocating for getting out there and bullying police and causing problems. We're not saying I back the blue. I love the police, 
but we got to hold them accountable. Everyone needs to be audited, correct? Um, I believe that everybody should learn that it's their right to record. It, when you're recording police, like let's say on a traffic stop or whatnot, you're not only doing this for the people, but you actually could be doing this for police as well. What if some? What if the person says that the police did something wrong and the police didn't actually do it wrong? You know, the, the videos are out there. And uh, the police can actually use the video to back them up or help them out in situations like that as well. That's why I believe that recording police is not a negative thing. I know they try to spin it and make it seem like uh, recording police and holding them accountable is uh, uh, not a positive thing. And um, one of the things I think police do very well is use propaganda to garner support no matter what. We can do no wrong. We're, we're given a badge and a gun and we're automatic heroes. I don't believe that's necessarily true. I don't believe that police officers bleed blue. In fact, I believe that um, we're all human. We all make mistakes. And there is an umbrella of protection that allows police officers to continue these mistakes. They get away with a lot. They have um, police unions, which allow po bad police officers to go work in other areas, uh, neighboring departments. We have internal investigations uh, that oh, we, 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 we did an internal investigation and we found that the officer did no wrongdoing. There are a lot of case laws that allow police officers to not, you know, they say that police are here to protect the people, right? But isn't that what the Second Amendment is for? Now, I understand there's little old ladies out there that are not able to protect themselves. Um, maybe they're the ones that need the police, right? And so this whole mindset that we really need police i believe that family neighbors we should all really learn how to really protect each other out there we should really get to know and speak to to our friends and family and our neighbors and, and uh learn how to treat each other kindly learn how to protect each other out there and america is is a place that has everybody here we need to learn how to coexist and uh you know i i do believe that if you lean left and just because you lean left, you're no longer my friend. Um, what kind of American am I? If you lean right and I say, well, you know what, man, you you lean right. And I bite into. There, there's extremes on both sides, which I agree absolutely, with. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I believe that we need to learn how to coexist. And, you know, this is one of the things that I say on my channel a lot. You know, here, this is this First Amendment auditing community seems to be one of the first communities out there regarding activism or whatnot that i believe that we grab people by the by their collars and we push them forward you know what i mean let's not lean one way or the other let's move forward guys and um and that's why i think this is an amazing community there has been a lot of channels that have come in you know later on and they do other things like they go film private businesses churches and now we got people recording folks while they're eating just to stir up some you know, some for clicks and views. You are like, against anyone stirring up any commotion or problems. That's not what we want here. Right, right, right. And like I say, I've even made mistakes out there uh, where I'm not acting as professional as I should be, you know, and, and uh, I, I listen to the comments. I read the comments and, you know, I wait for people to put me in check. And in reality, that's kind of what I need as well. That's what we all need. We We need people practicing their first amendment you know letting me have it when i screw up you know what i but, mean but yeah but what you're doing is commendable because we cannot have these police officers acting like and i'm going to say it, these globalist drones these robots they got to understand our constitution they got to because they're the ones upholding it right they have got to understand this they are upholding our constitution when they swear an oath to the constitution they are protecting not abusing our rights. They are protecting our rights. Not out there to abuse our rights. They have got to learn the amendments. They cannot be out there being bouncers with badges. That's not what we that's not what our taxpayer money goes to. It is to protect us against who? Government. Right. Exactly. And I'm glad you say that because that doing what I do has allowed me to uncover patterns. I started asking cops if they know the First Amendment of the Constitution, and it's mind blowing. A high percentage in the high 90s, cops don't know it. Now, there are cops that have stated the First Amendment, and I'll shake hands, I'll fist bump with them, and I'm like, thank you so much for mean saying they that. Uphold it. Right. And um, one of the patterns that I've uncovered is the fact that a high percentage of cops don't know it. 
And you, if you look online for a video where a cop, a cop gets sworn in to get that gun and a badge and uniform, it would, it would amaze you to see that you are hardly going to find cops who actually know the oath that they're swearing to. They are only repeating something that somebody else is reading to them. So they never really learned the oath that they're swearing to. That kind of seems like a sham, right? It seems like it's like they faked it, fake it till you make it. And, you know, when somebody like the chief or whoever is is uh, is swearing them in, they're just they're reading from a book as well. And I, I dare anyone right now watching to go look at a video, go find a video online of a cop who actually knows his oath when he's getting sworn in. I can't find one. Wow. Please, if, if you guys if you guys find one, please send it to me because I will highlight it. You know, there was a lot, I had a lot of friends that went off to be caught. They were some of the biggest criminals, too. <laughs> they grew up on the border, man. And we all got in a lot of like uh, uh, shenanigans down here. Right. But but uh, a lot of these guys went off to be cops. Right. And and uh, and then the main thing and a lot of these guys I bounced with in bars. Like I was bouncers with them in bars. So I knew the mentality. And they went off to be cops. And a lot of more young kids, 21, 25 years old, they just want, they're out for the adrenaline rush. They want to chase down bad guys. They want to beat somebody up. That's really the mentality for a lot of these younger guys getting in the force. They're not, they really are not sitting down, taking a deep breath and going, okay, I better learn the Constitution and understand who I'm protecting here, who I'm supposed to be protecting here. A lot of these guys go into the force for the rush of it, to get the pussy, you know, sh stuff like that. I mean, really, that's 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 what I've encountered with my friends mm -hmm. that, you know, were started off really young, going, you know, going into the police force. And then as they get older, they either get out of it, they see what it's all about, they're sick of dealing with that negative vibration, or they start learning the, the, the truth of what they're doing and they start settling down a little bit and they just kind of become these donut frequent frequent donut <laughs> donut eaters at Dunkin Donuts and they just kind of hate their job you know but but there are I mean, I'm going to say this and I'm going to say this over and over again I'll let my family a lot of good people in the 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 police force a lot of admirable good people I'm not putting down every cop I'm just saying that I know a lot of these guys when I was younger and and I and all we're saying is know the constitution know who you're protecting that's all we're saying right absolutely um there's a man named uh, Dave McRae, who is former law enforcement. He was a fish and game warden for 23 years. He watched one of my videos where I actually commended a fish and game warden for acting professionally, not violating, any, not violating the man's rights. He gave the guy a warning for fishing in an area he wasn't supposed to be fishing in. He said, ah, not everybody knows. And he was very respectful. So when I put that video out, this uh, retired cop, Fish and Game Warden, he he was like, man, I really like this guy's approach to his channel. And uh, he decided to write a book. That book is called Rise of the Oath Breakers by Dave McRae. Shout out to him. And I don't have any, um, I don't get any money for sales for that book. He did offer me a percentage of that. And I told him, nah, man, I, I like the name, to... Rise yeah. of the Oath Breakers. Right. So in other words, cops that are not now breaking their oath to the Constitution. Right. And that book is wow. dedicated to First Amendment auditing. A lot of times where we have been uh, violated for just recording in public. And, you know, a lot of these uh, in government installations, right? A lot of folks don't know this, but government is a business. And every government installation is a business. You are supposed to, you should be documenting and recording your business transactions with the government agent that you're in front of you should be recording it let's say you go to the dmv and um they the lady has an attitude with you right and let's say she you give her your address and she sends it to the wrong address on purpose but you got to drive to work and you get your car impounded because you never received your tags who's to blame you are because she's not going to pay for it nobody's going to pay for it but what if you have proof that you did everything you were supposed to do. And what if this woman at the DMV has a really bad attitude? And I use that as an example because how many of us went to the DMV and, you know, somebody has a bad attitude with you? <laughs> no. Um, I feel like it's that part in Beetlejuice where they're all just sitting there. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> they're just in the waiting room. That's like the DMV to me. Right. Um, and, it, you know, it's it's a it's it's a business guys and you got to understand that you know you're participating in that business and what can i say there's a you know there's a lot of you know i tried well, to you, I, 
Uh-huh, go ahead. You said something earlier about we should be able to protect each other and, and, and have a stronger community and teach your kids when they go out the rights. I believe that because there was a video I just saw in Texas of a robbery and Texas is open carry. So the, a robbery breaks out in some restaurant. I can't remember the video. I'm sure some people will be able to put it up, but uh, there was a robbery that broke out in Texas. And obviously this, this, this young kid, he probably looked about 17, 19 years old. He's wearing a mask, but I could tell by the looks of his frame and everything comes in and he's a, uh, like robbing the place, flashing his gun around. Well, someone, a, a bystander that was sitting there, a citizen, took the matter into his own hands. And as the robber kind of turned around, the guy pulled out his gun and blah, 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 blasted the guy. No right. cops were there. Nobody was there. The guy took the situation in his own hands. He was open carry. He had, he had every reason to do what he did. I feel bad for the kid because I know that had to have been a kid that was robbing the place. But that keeps law and order in itself. That's knowing true. that you can go into a place and other people are carrying you're not going to get away with what you think you're going to get away with. You're going to get blasted. You're going to pay ultimate price right then and there. And unfortunately, you some people, you can't wait to call the cops. And then they show up and they can't do anything about it. The guy already Absolutely. took off. You know, so you're right on that. I do believe that an armed society is a safe society. You know, and the Second Amendment was absolutely written to protect the First Amendment. And like I said, the First Amendment mirrors our natural rights. And, you know... Uh, in that video that we were just watching, two of the guys in that video were Nikki and Nate, two of my sons. The guy, the skateboarder with the long hair, that's Nate Skates 182. Um, and the other one's uh, San Joaquin Audits. They both have channels. My oldest son, who's a veteran, uh, San Joaquin Jr. Yeah, bro, you look young. Man, you're making me feel old, dog. We're the same age, bro. <laughs> I, know, I, got, I got all the grays. <laughs> no, I got them too, bro. It's like, I'm getting them on the sides. Um. And uh, my son, my oldest son, who's a veteran, he also has a channel and does what I do. And uh, and there was two other guys on that video that we just watched, uh, East Los Audits. He's from Los Angeles area. And Jay Surreal Camera, who's no longer with us, kind of like that buff dude that was in there. He he passed away recently as well. Um, there's another friend of mine who was a long time. How supporter. did he pass away? I mean, you don't have to say, but um, he, don't, he don't. Was it this? No, Don't he t- he took something that he he thought was something else, and it oh, killed fent- him. Was it fentanyl? Yeah, he thought yeah, it was something happened else. Happened to a lot of people. Man. Fentanyl killed him. Yeah. Um, but he was a good guy. He was a personal friend of mine, and that that really broke my heart, man. He came out to uh to <laughs> record with me several times. He was from he's from Florida, and you know even behind the scenes, man, I just helped his his the mother of his child and the son uh, unmonetize the channel from Jay's name to the family's name. And they're going to continue the channel. And, you know, I've been we've been helping them out behind the scenes. There's a lot of work that I do behind the scenes as well. It's not just on the surface of me shouting out a lot of other channels and helping them grow. I do believe that me personally on my own, I can't change things. I do believe that we need a community of people understanding their rights and challenging, you know, questioning authority, uh, questioning these these uh, the th- these policies and these uh, ordinances that try to overstep the boundaries of our natural rights. The- well, especially now with this this uh, regime pushing forward with this new world order, this globalist agenda, the people who are going to be enforcing that as cops. So we Absolutely. have to hold them responsible for what they are doing. There's going to I I commend people like you. More people need to do this. You need to study the Constitution. You got to learn the amendments. Make sure the cops know. Um, and, and, and really enforce your rights if they don't. Right. Absolutely. And, and I got to tell you that, uh, I was really nervous about coming on to your show today for one, I'm not really well-spoken Two, Um, I know that, uh, you have kind of a, a kind of a large following and a lot of your following is, is definitely back to blue, but I do want to point out that there are, I didn't understand this about the blue line flag when I started until I started getting a lot of comments from veterans saying things like, you know, that flag is extremely disrespectful. You know, the blue line flag is is not the red, white, and blue. That's not what our brothers and sisters died in the war for, for that blue line flag, for these cops to, you know, display this everywhere in the departments and on their uniforms. And as a matter of fact, they should turn it back to the red, white, and blue and not the blue line flag. And I and, and that leads me to uh, mention something else. Why do police use military ranks, sergeant, lieutenant, you know, all these things? I went on a uh, podcast with uh, Cannabis Talk 101, and those guys are amazing, by the way. Shout out to them, man. These guys have given me the opportunity to go and, and meet people and talk to people. Dude, I was on 
I went to the Burning Trees Festival. I was on stage with some of my favorite rappers, Busta Rhymes, Too Short. I got nice. to hang out with Exhibit in the, in, at the hotel. Um, Blue from Cannabis Talk 101, he said something on that thing. He's like, man, you guys, we need to stop calling these cops sergeants because we're not at war with the people. You know, we're... Interesting. We're, yeah, and this, these are things that I'm I'm uncovering as I go. Like I, I was like blown away. I was like, "Whoa, dude, really?" I was like, "That's bad, bad ass." So I went, <laughs> I went cop watching that night, and uh, this this three striped, this three chevron striped. You know, you know, he was he wore the three chevrons, and like I said, I don't like to call them sergeants, but I was like, um, "Can I get your name and badge number?" And he was a uh, sergeant, yada yada yada, and I was like, "Assistant manager, what?" And he was like, no, sergeant. <laughs> I was like, assistant manager, what? He's like, sergeant. And I, I thought it was funny because, like I said, the, uh, Blue from Cannabis Talk 101, he was correct on that. You know, in my opinion, why are we using military ranks to address them? Um, and somebody that's, else that's said, actually very profound, man. I've never really thought about that. You're right. A lot of us don't, man. A lot yeah. of these things fly over our head until it really gets broken down. And it does take for us you know, to learn from each other. And there's a lot of newer channels popping up right now. I want to give a shout out to all the vets that are out there that decided to pick up a camera and record. I believe in my heart that they're serving this country twice. You know, when they go, they go into the service, they serve the country. Now they come back out here and they hold true to their belief that, you know, we have natural rights and the constitution limits the scope of authority that these public officials have over us. So shout out to all you vets that are out there, especially Angry Vet, who's a new channel and he's growing fast. He's just an amazing dude. Angry Vet? The Angry Vet, yeah. Shout out to Rights Crispy, my son. Uh, let me give a quick give shout a, out. Give, to a, give a few of them out, man, yeah. Yeah, um, these are the vets that, that are out there recording. Underground Auditor, Alabama Transparency, The Angry Vet, Rights Crispy, my son, San Joaquin Jr., Blue Steel, Cop Watch, Imperial Beach, Flex Your Freedoms, Alcor Accountability, Lincoln Square, Unitas, uh, Blind Justice, Big Nick, and Cap, Cop Watch, and Stone Sailor, who's actually a big supporter of yours. And, you know, nice. um, shout out to a, a lot of the other guys out there who are not vets, or I don't know if you're a vet or not, but we got Wolfie Gladley, Jersey Watcher, Bay Area Transparency, Brooklyn Audits, Santa Ana Audits, Knowledge is Power, Press Harder, Susan Bassey, Press with Ranker, James Freeman, Denver Metro Audits, Open Government Investigations, Joe Cool for Public Safety, Harvey Freeberg, Utah Cop Watch. Constitution State, News Now, South Carolina, Here's the Deal, Raggle Monkey, Upstate, uh, SC News, This is a Public Service, NC Tyrant Hunter, uh, Acura Amanda, 51550, Great Lakes Audits, Sean Porter, Ram, Ron Benghazi Headland, Brand Example News, Not the End of Freedom, and uh, Rest in Peace, Jay Surreal Camera. Really quick, there's a guy, uh, his name is Jamie Daves, who is a, uh, was a supporter of mine from when I first started my channel, and I started about six years ago. And uh, one of the things that he told me was his dad and his whole family is were cops, kind of like you, Nino. A lot of his family members are police. And he was back to blue for, you know, a long time. And to this very day, he still loves his, well, he's no longer with us. He passed away recently. He had, uh, I know he took the jab and uh, yeah, he did yeah. pass be away. Careful so with that. Be careful with that. Yeah. yeah, I know. I don't know if that's what, you know, did it for him, but. Um, he was a biker and he absolutely loved and respected my channel. I actually did a podcast episode with him. One of the things that he talked to me about was his father, who was like high in police department. I think he became chief and all kinds of, you know, ranks. He was up there. He didn't talk to his dad for a long time. But when he started watching my channel, he found uh, something that he can actually talk to his dad about. So my channel actually helped him and his dad have a relationship again and his dad he was starting to show his dad my channel and he said his dad got a few laughs out of it that we he would be like you know wow now i see you know kind of where you're coming from and why you didn't want to become a cop and um and a lot of his family is still police to this very day and uh, he, he was a really good friend of mine man and he passed away and that shit broke my heart too and um i've lost a few friends this year bro or last year and it's broken my heart too. I'm just, they couldn't beat their vices, dude. Like I, you know, I've been sober and they, they fell into the, the fentanyl things real, man. Right. That's getting people. Yep. You know, and, and I want to make this statement also is that we're not saying we need more police officers. We need people to, to protect the law, but protect the citizens, understand that they're making an oath to the constitution. 
not to be a drone. Protect right. the people, not the globalists. That's how I see it now at this point. You know, they don't even know what they're enforcing anymore. You know, they're just like, oh, do what we say. You know, just the yeah. same mentality as kicking somebody out of a club as a bouncer. There's no, it, there's no difference to me. And I used to do that, you know. And, and so th- that's what I'm saying. Folks, you can see Dave at San Joaquin Valley Transparency. Is that the name of it? Or San yeah. Joaquin Valley Auditors? No, San Joaquin Valley Transparency. I put transparency in my channel name because I wanted to be transparent. I wouldn't want to come off as being anti-police. And uh, when I when I say this to the cops when I'm out there, I'm like, look, bro, I'm not anti-police, but I'm not pro-police either. I put it out there. I put the whole... You're holding the, them accountable. Yeah, I put the truth out there and, and the people get to you know view and see exactly what's going on. And I think patterns speak to me. I think uh, we should be able to uncover some of these truths and some of the things that are actually happening out there. You know, there's a lot of videos. And I, and I will say that uh, do police do good work? Yeah, I, I think so. I think we've seen police officers jump into the waters, save kids. I think we've seen police officers do really good, tremendous work out there. But we can't overlook the bad that they do as well. A lot of folks, I think, like there's channels out there, like for instance, Donut Operator, and uh, some of these other channels that are like really pro police, and they won't show the bad that they do. They won't talk about the bad that they, you know, they do. And we're we're seeing a pattern of police officers getting away with a lot of shit. There's some channels out there. A lot of them have been purged off the internet, and these are predator poacher channels. I'm sure you've heard of them. A lot of you guys have heard of them, where they go out and catch. Um, Folks that are that are being that are preying on children, right? Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. There have oh, been and they've cops. knocked those off, huh? Yeah, they they've purged a lot something. of those channels. Yeah, because they're saying that they don't want these guys in these uh, having interactions with these people without the presence of police. Wow. And uh, there's some wow. amazing channels out there, and we're seeing patterns of police officers actually protecting these these bad guys there's one Other channel asses. in particular uh called people watch Be- out don't say that name either because that's youtube you know how it is bro right you know what i mean like we have yeah. to dance i have to yeah, pull like a thing i could be on this fucking channel i know <laughs> it's, I, it's, that's I, I how know, i'm staying bro. up i know it's, um there's just a shows channel- you where the, who's who's in charge huh right and there's, there's a chief of police that got caught caught up on one of those channels and uh, there's also there's a channel called People v Preds from San Diego, and uh, he was purged off YouTube as well. But he had, I think, in in a year, in in one year, he caught over 200, 200 bad dudes out there, wow. right? And uh, police started to kind of give him crap. But there was a lot of times where he actually worked with police, and police actually did arrest the guy and stuff like that. And he was he was respectful to police. He wasn't anti police or anything like that. And but. The more cops would allow it to happen and, and kind of, you know, start asking for his information, like he's the bad guy, and then calling him a, uh, 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 what do they call those guys who who go out and uh, and and act like they're police in the world? Oh, like pretenders, like the guys that go out there and pretend no, to be police um, or what? Uh, forget the name of it, man. I I have to think about it yeah. later. Oh. Um, but they they. Uh, they just it's 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 unbelievable what we're seeing the patterns that we're seeing out there and um just because you wear a gun and a badge and a uniform doesn't make you an automatic good person and I think we need to really get that mindset out of our heads and you know approach this with an understanding of you know they swore an oath and let's hold them to that you know, I agree let's, with you. Let's Dave, sure I agree that- with you a thousand percent on this. That's why I had you on my show because this is something I'm I'm adamant about. And I come from a family of blue, FBI, police, and 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 I've always looked at that. My dad is a detective. Um and and uh you have to hold them accountable. You know, you know, we have to. There's no other way. We got the, and especially now, the reason I find this so important, especially now, because this globalist agenda is taking hold and really spreading his tentacles everywhere and who do they use to enforce not the constitution not the constitution but the new world order agenda is police and if they don't know what they're doing they're going to blindly do it right and we got to hold them accountable so i commend people like you thank you i want to thank you for your service seriously thank you bro um i do believe as well when cops violate the people's rights what they don't realize is uh they're actually violating their children's rights and their grandchildren's rights in the future as well and it, it just, I don't think the police really truly understand that yet. And I, I always say this, like when a friend of mine told me, 
why don't you do more politics? I feel like you're beating a dead horse. I go, well, you know, uh, <clears throat> I know you do politics, but I think that your channels keep getting taken down. And I think that I could say the same thing. You're beating a dead horse because once we uncover that a politician's trash, they're going to put in another one. And, yeah. you know, he calls them political parasites. And I laugh, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of funny. Um, you know, you're my master's better than your master. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, I, I listen. I agree with everything you're saying, dude. I, I do. I, I mean, it's just, I know the dire times that we are in and if we don't straighten this out, or if we don't even begin to, we're done. As not just as a country, but as a species, because this is against right. humanity what they want to do. And when you understand the bigger picture and what they're doing, who they use as their minions, their drones, which we have yeah. to hold them accountable. Which are who? The police, the right. border patrol, the everyone, anyone who has a badge, we have to hold them accountable. We have to audit them. And it's well, time that people do this. Yeah. When. Uh... You know, there's a, a a lot that comes with this, man. Like I, and I will say this, bro. Recently, for the whole time I've been on YouTube, I've always been afraid to, you know, say that I'm a Christian, you know, that I believe in God. And uh, recently I, I began to not be afraid of that. And my channel just started taking off recently again after that. Once I started, you know, being afraid, being unafraid of that. And uh, there's a channel called Southeastern PA Community Watch. Shout out to him. He calls cops uh, who act like this, he calls them demonic creatures. <laughs> and it's funny to me because, um, you know, there was one time I, I was talking on the live stream and I said, man, you know, sometimes, you know, there was a, a thing that I had read a, a long time ago in youth group. And uh, and it, I, it reminded me from a video from a channel called Sling and Stone who talks about like uh things that are happening today and he ties it into like uh you know the bible and stuff that it says and he talked about how you know this man was possessed and he was uh living in a cemetery because the villagers didn't want him that they didn't want him bothering you know the living they wanted him they wanted him to be you know amongst the dead out there and i guess jesus went in through the village and they showed him to a guy and then Jesus went and talked to the demons and the guy and the demons asked if they could be casted out into the pigs. And, you know, so he did, he casted the demons out into the pigs and the pig, the pigs jumped off a cliff and, uh, and drowned themselves because they would rather have killed themselves than, than be possessed by these demons. And I was like, you know, it's crazy. Sometimes these cops are out there and, you know, they seem to approach almost all incidents with bad attitudes you know they if we tell cops that we have rights we know the constitution they they start to call the people um sovereign citizens you know and that's an oxymoron they label them because yeah. they don't know the constitution so they label you oh you're the sovereign citizen yeah i know and and uh you know it's just it's a pattern that we are seeing and and you know and you know, like, like I, I, I went live for a little bit yesterday and I'm like, man, I'm going to go on David Nino Rodriguez's uh, podcast and uh, maybe you guys can help me out with some pointers and some topics. And I started writing things down and I realized that, you know, when I talk naturally, you know, sometimes I feel like uh, when I get nervous, bro, you're going to, I get tongue twisted a lot. Everyone does. I, yeah. I started to get organized and I'm just like, man, the more organized I try to be, the more unorganized I am. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, it's just got a free flow, man. But cops don't know, you know, how to deal with mental disabilities, right? You know, and now we're trying to uh send, you know, folks that uh that know, know how to deal with people with mental disabilities, mental problems and stuff like that. And you know, that is scary as well, too, because you know, all all roads to hell were paved. The road to hell was paved with good intentions, right? And so, the more government we create, the more, you know, it does it get corrupted along the way. And uh, you know, we have who gives, like for instance, you know, um, this whole uh, freedom to walk act that you know the the Democrats were happy to pass in California. But every and you you see folks cheering it on in Instagram. What is the freedom to walk act? Where they kind of took away uh, jaywalking, okay. right? But here's okay. why I don't I don't think that it should be celebrated, because they leave it into the um, power of the 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 cop to be able to say, well, you dangerously walked into the street, so now I can accost you and cite you for jaywalking. So 
they actually put it into the, the hands of police to be able to say, yes, you're jaywalking. So how what did we actually win there? You know, and, and I keep seeing that over and over again with new policies, you know, new government. So now we're we're seeing a lot of instances where cops are being called to areas where somebody's having a mental breakdown or whatnot. Uh, recently, I shared a video on my channel where a guy walked out with a gun pointed to his, you know, his own head, you know, under under his chin. He turned around and walked inside and the cops shot him in the back. And uh, I guess, you know, the cops saved him from himself, from shooting himself or what? <laughs> Killed him? Yeah, no, he uh, actually he was paralyzed from the waist down. Oh, and... so he has even a worse life now. Yeah, I already he... wanted to kill himself, but the god, the cop took it in his own hands. Yeah, to yeah. shoot him in yeah. the back. Yeah. And uh, Un unbelievable, man. And now the father is angry, and there you'll see the father where 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 a cop the the father is angry. He's posted up outside the uh, police station and flipping off the cops and all that, and he's he's angry, you know. And I think uh, as a father myself. You know, I think the man is peacefully protesting. Uh, maybe the cops don't like it, um, but at the same time, it's his right. You know, how many elements of the First Amendment is he practicing right there? He has a freedom of speech, so he can tell a cop, F you. He has a freedom of press. He has a freedom uh, to redress his government, right? And uh, at, at this point, I would say this. Up to this point, the people have... Uh, with this First Amendment auditing and stuff, we are in a state of a peaceful non-compliance. Uh, we don't want to just comply. The people should not just comply because at this point we've uh, we've seen that the patterns don't lie. The cops don't know the Constitution. They don't know that the people have human rights. So why should we just comply? Um, it makes it very dangerous. Uh, and and I I gotta add that when you stand up for your rights, you stand up for everyone's rights around you. When you even give, the police rights, even the police rights and their families, members rights and their sons and their grandchildren and future generations. When you give up your rights, you make it a dangerous world for everyone um, because these cops get empowered and the people believe that they should just comply. And, and that's another thing, too, that I want to address is like even when the whole the whole boogeyman thing was going down in 2020 and people were wearing their face diapers, I was you know, even going into doctor's offices, nothing. They tell me to do that. I say no, and I walk out. I do not comply on any level with them because if you if you're that one, if you start complying, then you they take an inch, they go a mile. You give them an inch, they take a mile. You have to. It's very important that people understand this. You have to, no matter how much you want to go with the herd and be with the sheep, you got to stand your ground. You have got to stand your ground. And if enough of us keep doing this, that's when changes are made. Absolutely. Um, you're absolutely right. And let me show you this really quick. What um, that guy who was on my channel on that video, you just showed the buff guy. He's no longer here. And uh, his son, uh, JJ, he's, he's young. And he's Jay used to always say that my kids are going to know their rights. He sent me this and it reads, when the people fear government, there is tyranny. When the government fears the people, there is liberty. A yes. quote by Thomas wow. Jefferson. He yeah. sent me that for Christmas. And uh you know, I, I got teary eyed when he sent it to me because that's Jay's son, you know, and and I, you know, I believe in the people knowing their rights. Um, and I think that this is something that everybody could agree with. My viewers, your viewers, the left and the right. I think uh, we should truly understand. And, and I also get comments like this. Check this out. Um, I get a lot of uh, comments from black folks that say things like, um, well, that guy was white. If the black folks talked to the cops like that, he'd get shot and killed. Although I understand that comment, I do believe that we need to try to kind of get rid of that mindset. I think everybody in this country should be addressing this. I think, uh, like I said in that video, freedom should be the topic on every dinner table in America every night. Well, imagine if someone like even George Floyd was right. able to like start understanding his rights, his constitution, pull out a camera, pull out his phone and started drilling the cops. Like you were everything. Right. I noticed these guys go in a state of fear. They get paralyzed like a deer in headlights. When you start pulling out, when you pull out your phone and you start reciting the information that you recite, that you know about your rights, they freeze. They don't know what to do. It's like yeah. they were caught in an act. Absolutely. And they all of a sudden are like, oh, mm, uh, well, uh, uh, they just, well, they, they don't know what to do. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's almost comical because they yeah. don't know the Constitution. 
And I, I always get asked, you know, for advice on, you know, folks starting a channel or folks starting to record police. And I got to tell you, bro, because of my channel and channels like mine, I'm not going to give myself the credit. I give it to the people who are out there doing what I do as well. Uh, we're seeing people who it's their first video and uh, and they know exactly what to say. They are on it. They've been watching our videos for years now. And they're just waiting for that moment for a cop to pull them over. And then I got to tell you, I want to make a disclaimer here right now. My channel is not for criminals. My channel is not so that criminals can get away with crime. If you're a criminal and you expect to commit and violate people's, you know, uh, you know, commit crimes against the people, make them victims, please unsubscribe for me. You know, my channel is not for criminals. I don't want you guys to get away with creating victims and find a way to get to get off. Agreed. That, that's not what this is for. That's not why I did this. My my channel is specifically for people who believe in their rights, who, you know, I don't want, I hate to say not, okay. They're not for people trying to game the system. Right, right, man. Right. And, and, this is not about gaming the system. This is not for criminals. This is about just knowing your rights. Simple as that. Right. And this is also for police rights. It's for right. everyone's rights as a human being. Yep. Um, people always ask me if, uh, you know, what advice do you have for for folks who record police? I would say that um, just record your interactions or if you see, you know, police pull somebody over, start from a distance. And I always say as well, if you're going to record police, you know, hold your phone up and don't look at them in the eyes. Look at them through your phone. This mm -hmm. is going to solve two problems. You're not going to get the accidental crotch cam where you're looking at them in the eyes and all you're doing is recording their crotch on accident. Also, that's going to let the cop know that they're not just talking to you. They're talking to the people that are going to be watching the video. Mm. And uh, the, I think that alone right there has probably saved my ass a good 20 to 30 times where wow. a cop is ready to pounce on me. But then he's like looking at my camera like, damn, what should I do? Same thing with the cops that you just seen in that video with the one holding the the flashlight in his hand. Yeah. And I, and I will have, you know, bro, you need a video? flashlight in the middle of the day for, I mean, come <laughs> on. I mean, really like that, that's obvious. Like take it's off your sunglasses, bro. Like for real, yeah. you really need to see during the day. Um, I was that on that video right there, it's kind of a long video, but at the end of the video, the Sergeant comes out the three striper, right? We're not supposed to call them sergeants. We need to figure out new terms for these guys. Yeah. Um, manager, <laughs> manager, right? The manager comes out and, uh, he says, you know, you guys are right. You guys are allowed to be here. And uh, so at the end of the day, wow. you know, I was asking Will Willison and May, the two cops are right there. I was like, are you guys ready to apologize now? You guys are wrong. They wouldn't apologize. Of course not. I, I actually seen Willison like like uh, I would say like six months later on a cop watch in L.A. And He's I was famous like, now. Yeah, I was like, hey, Willison, <laughs> what's up, man? You ready to apologize now? <laughs> <laughs> what did he say? No. He's like, apologize for what? You know, he kind of had that smug attitude, yeah. but he kind of laughed at it because he knew it was funny, bro. He knew it was funny. And we were right. Ready to apologize now? So. Why doesn't he just apologize, man? You know, it's like, dude, just <laughs> have a little bit of humble pie. Everybody eats it in this world. Absolutely. You know, dude, fuck, I've been humbled. Shit, many, many, many millions of times. <laughs> We went to the uh, LAPD training facility after that one. That was at the sheriff's training facility. We went to the LAPD training facility that same day. And that was at Elysium Park behind Dodger Stadium. And uh, that was the audit that we did that was the most um, police called on one First Amendment audit. Record breaking. Jay was on that one. And it's crazy, man, because we actually walked through that whole freaking training facility. We even walked through the the, the shooting range. I was like... It felt like we were in the game of Grand Theft Auto. Like we were just freely <laughs> roaming around, dude. It was it was insane. It was like surreal. And uh, there was a, 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 I would say, another manager that came out. And you know that I've been offered the opportunity to go and train a class there or to at least go speak. You to have? Them. Yeah. And uh, and like I say, man, I don't feel like I'm a good speaker. I feel like some of your half of your viewers are probably tuned out already because just no. I, I think they, of, I think um, if anyone's paying attention, they're, they're fascinated by this because I, I think this is it. This is the people taking it back on all levels. I don't just talk about our politicians. I'm talking about on all levels. This is grassroots right, right here. Right. Um. And I and, and I said that before, man. Like it doesn't matter who's in power, the left or the right. They both use the cops to take away our rights. They are the ones exactly. wield wielding the hammer at us it's time to take back the hammer and put it in the hands of good people and um 
I mean, I don't know how else better to say that, you know. What was the name of the book again? Uh, Oath, the Rise, Rise of the of, Rise of the Oath Breakers. That's good. I think people should read that. Um, Joaquin, uh, Dave, Tokayo. I'm gonna end this year. I'm gonna put this up on 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 fluff tube. I don't think we said anything. Uh, I'll send it to my people to look at, but I think we're good. Um, I want to. I I commend you for what you do, brother. Seriously, man. Thank you for coming on my show. You're welcome, bro. Thank you for having me on, man, and all the viewers that are watching right now. Thank you, and uh, try to uh, see past you know my mistakes along the way, and try to see past the mistakes that we do as well, and call us out. You know, let us know. Let us have it in the comment section where we make where we make mistakes. Let us help us get better at this. Um, I don't believe that there should be a separation. I think that we need to all come together and figure out a way to, you know, to really use our natural rights out there. And um, thank you I so like much. What you, you know. I like what you say on that because I do the same thing with my audience. I'm like, listen, I, I, I don't help me help you. Let's all help each other. Like I'm transparent. I listen. I make a lot of mistakes, and but if I mess up, I come out and say, "Okay, I messed up," you know. But just hold me accountable. You're the same way, and that's why it says San Joaquin Valley transparency. Perfect right. name. Thank you, Dave. Thank you. Thank you, bro. Thank you. God bless you. All right, man. And you you got you got recording too, so you can put it up on your channel as well, buddy. All right, cool. Thank All right, you, brother. Bro. Later. Later. All right, Dave. Let's keep in touch. Hell yeah, bro. For sure, right. man. That was Definitely. good, man. You have any questions, good. man? You ever want to chop it up and talk? You ever bored? Hit me up, man. I work from home. I'm going to be out in California. I'm going to be out there the 27th. I'm going out there to meet some people on business that I'm trying to put together. But uh, I'll, I'll reach out to you, bro. Oh, yeah. All right. Were okay. you guys skateboarding when you got caught right there? That was my son, Nate Skates. He's been recording cops since he was 14 years old, bro. Wow. And he knows with me. It. It's, it's right. so amazing when we're all in the car together. We're out there recording, doing audits, and we're just all having a good time, a blast. Awesome. Everything I say is a dad joke to them. It's just... <laughs> <laughs> 13, Dude, 14. I'm just getting started. I'm having my first son next year, or, or really? uh, September, next year. It's 23 September of this year. Yeah. Wow, dude, starting late, huh? Yeah, but dude, I was a pro. I was a pro fighter, and I was partying, and my life was a fucking mess. So there's no way I could have brought a child into this world. It probably would have straightened me up, but I don't. Now, at least I know, like, I, you know, I'm ready. I'm ready to have, be a father. You know. That's cool, man. It's kind of scary, but. My um, my oldest son, San Joaquin Junior. David Junior. He uh entered his first jujitsu tournament and nice. uh, he won all three matches. He got first place. Uh, my grandson, he's a wrestler. He just uh, he just won um his tournament. Um, and it, it's amazing, man. Uh, even my son, who's a a, a veteran, he didn't really um get what I was doing, and I think he was not really too much for it until. You know, afterwards, then he started a channel as well. He started recording with me, and he. We also. It's, hope, it's weird, man. I still look at us like we're young guys. You know, it's just yeah. it's crazy that. Mid, I heard you say on your live stream a little bit ago that uh, middle. What is it? Middle age sucks or something. Like <laughs> middle age man. <laughs> yeah, it's like. Fuck, dude, dude. I'm like, dude. It's kind of like a weird gray area, right? It's kind of like you feel the transition coming and it's kind of scary. It's kind of like, fuck dude, I'm going into old age now. Like that's yeah. fucking crazy. You know, you know what I mean, I don't care what people tell me like, Oh, you're only as young as you're only as old as you feel. I'm like, no motherfucker. Like, right. You know, I went out with some friends in Phoenix the other day, not the other day, but a couple of months ago, they're all in their mid thirties, you know, and I consider those guys old for the clubs or bars even. And I went out with them and I'm like, fuck dude. Like I didn't drink. Right. I don't drink. And I was just looking around and I was like, shit man not one f i'm the oldest motherfucker here just looking around just kind of observing everything and it was just kind of depressing i was just like, kind of like fuck man it's like this day is long gone bro like wow you know yeah. i don't know recently guess... after after a couple of friends of mine passed away i got really sick bro i thought i was dying i'm gonna really? find out i had gerd um what's gerd uh, like gastro, like reflux and shit like that. Um, yeah. And no, uh, there's, there's also stages of that, bro. Like I feel like I was getting ready to go into stage three, which is irreversible. Stage four becomes cancerous. Then I'll get throat cancer and all that shit. Um, and then I found out I'm pre-diabetic. Um, and I started you to hit get... the gym. I do now. Go do you, can lost... reverse, you can reverse all this shit. Right. Go do cardio, start lifting some weights, go every day. You just got to go 30 minutes to 40 minutes a day. 
Everyone's got that in their time. Even if you're doing a light workout, just be consistent. You don't have right. to kill yourself every day. Just get the blood flowing. Yep. Don't I mean, sweat. Sweating is the most important thing. I'm a I'm on a I'm on a diet now. Uh, I'm doing the Mediterranean diet. I did okay. some fasting for a little bit. I lost thirty pounds in three weeks, bro. Everything That's I was fucking eating, amazing. Everything I was eating, I was felt like I was getting bloating, um, and inflammation and type and shit like that. Do you do, do you do any fasting? I did. I did do some fasting when I got sick. I mean, I, did... good. I, I fast every week. I like, there's sometimes I go 16, 18 hours without eating. Man, I don't care anymore. I used to, when I was training, I used to eat three times a day, four times a day. I used to, and then I kept that habit. And then I was like, holy shit, I'm going to be 300 pounds in fucking a week. You know, like I was getting up there, bro. So now I just, I just, I eat when I feel like it. I try to eat a lot of protein. I eat about two, two or three times a day, but I, I try to stop eating at seven. And then I don't eat the next day till about 12 or one or sometimes two. And then I'll, I'll go go do my weights, go do my routines. I try to get done with everything by by this time exactly, 12. Like nice. 12 here. So one, now that I'm done, I'm going to go to hit the gym. That's the only way I feel good, bro. That that, that cures my depression. I think I'm going to go hit the gym right now, too. Dude, go, uh, do one, it. Go, go hit it up. One Fucking quick gym. tip for a for you being a father. Um, change yeah. Try to change 50% of the diapers. Um, you know, that will, uh, allow you to do whatever else you need to do. Um, you know, and, uh, yeah, I, 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 I used to always think like that, man. And, uh, that doesn't let the mother, you know, it gives her a break. And at the same time, you know, if you're busy, she'll never disrupt you and what you're doing. You know, I try to always, you know, be there for my kids and my older boys. I didn't really get to spend a lot of time with them growing up. Their mom and I, we got into it a lot. Um, the girl I'm with now, we've been together 20 years, um, Beautiful. not a dull moment. You know, we love each other. We like each other. And, uh, we Damn, just, bro, when I hear like, you have all these, you're younger than me and you have all these sons that are like oh, older, man, bro. Yeah. Crazy. I'm a grandfather. I'm a no, I'm your age. Bro. I'm fucking older than you. <laughs> it's going to be fun, bro. It's going to be fun, man. You know, enjoy, enjoy father. Damn, bro, I cannot believe how late I'm starting. Yeah. Me either. It's, it's. Man, I still feel like that 25 year old kid sometimes, dude. Like I, I look in the mirror and I'm like, fuck. Yeah. Like my, I mean, I look back on my pro career and I'm like, I was that guy. Right. Like, Give me I some used... GI Joes, bro. I'll probably play with them. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> dude, I mean, it, it's just, I don't feel my age. I don't know how the fuck. I'm, it was well, just look, a blink of a. You look good, bro. bro. You look good, bro. Thanks, man. Yeah, you look good. You you look mentally sharp and you look physically fit. So yeah, trying, trying. Let's keep in touch, bro. No doubt. All right, man. I'll keep watching your channel. It's awesome. Thank you, bro. My tokayo. Thank you, bro. Later, tokayo. All right, later. Take it easy, man. For sure.